So the first problem uh, that we just need to work on, and all, all this is asking us to do, ladies and gentlemen, is first just describe the end behavior. So all we need to do is just look at this graph and just kind of say, you know, what is happening with the graph? What is like the end behavior? What is the lasting effects that this graph is doing? Because it does all this crazy stuff right here, right? It goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. But what is it finally going to do? What is its end behavior? So we look as the graph continues to the left, we could say it's going to fall left. So we're going to say that the graph falls left. Then as we're going to the right, you can see that the graph is also going down. So we can say the graph falls right. Now, if in case we have a test or we need to write something a little bit more mathematical, we can kind of describe it as as far as what are the points doing on the graph. So we're going to talk about this as a function. So we're going to say that this is your f of x axis and this is your x axis. So what we notice is as my points, remember x, each point has an x and a f of x point. As my points go to the right, and they're going to keep on going to the right till they go to infinity. So as x goes to infinity, so my points of x go to infinity, my f of x points, are they going to go to positive f of x or negative f of x? Negative f of x. So as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. Then we start plotting points of x in the negative direction. And we go in the negative direction. We say as x approaches negative infinity, my coordinate points f of x, do they approach positive or negative infinity? Negative infinity. So there you go. That's all you guys had to do for, for, to answer question A. For letter B, it says determine if it's an odd or an even degree. So to do that, all we simply did is determine the number of zeros that we had, or what we called our x-intercepts of the graph. Now remember the definition last class period, what we talked about. Okay. So what we talked about last class period is when you have an even number of zeros, that told you you're going to have a even degree of a polynomial. If, or if you had no zeros at all, then you could have also an even one as well. So therefore, how many zeros do we have? Two, so therefore our degree of this function must be even. So you're going to say b is going to be an even degree. And then c just says state the number of zeros, which in this case we have two. Done. So that's all you guys had to do for 35 through 40 is just look at the graph, 